Oppo's not-so-distant past meets its future. Hey, it's Joshua Gar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Oppo Find 7 versus the Oppo N1. Although both handsets offer excellent build quality, there are several differences between the two devices when it comes to design language. Probably one of the most obvious differences is in the build materials. While the Oppo N1 featured a matted plastic body, the Find 7 offers a carbon fiber backing on the Quad HD model and a brushed finish on the back of the 1080p variant. Another fairly obvious difference between the two devices is the Oppo N1's unique rotating camera found up top. And the Find 7 might not feature a rotating camera, but one of its most distinguishing features is that new skyline notification light seen at the very bottom of the handset. The Oppo Find 7 with its 5.5 inch display is certainly not a small handset, but it is considerably lighter and less bulky than the Oppo N1, which features a 5.9 inch display. The Oppo N1 has volume rockers and the power button all on the right side, while the Find 7 returns to the same, somewhat uncommon layout seen in its predecessor, the Find 5, with the power button on the left and the volume rockers on the right. As we've said already, the Oppo N1 offers a massive 5.9 inch display with a 1080p resolution that brings in 373 pixels per inch. Now while the display has rich and vibrant colors, it just simply pales in comparison to the Oppo Find 7's 5.5 inch display with a resolution of 2560 by 1440, that's Quad HD as they're calling it, and an astonishing 538 pixels per inch. There are simply no other handsets currently on the market that can even begin to rival the Find 7's very photogenic display, though the Oppo N1 does provide 0.4 inches more viewing space. It essentially comes down to what matters more to you, the resolution of the display or perhaps the screen real estate that is provided. It is also worth noting that the Find 7 will offer a 1080p model for those of you who don't need the Quad HD, which should provide an image quality that more evenly matches the N1, albeit in a smaller package. The Oppo Find 7 has an upgraded processing package over the N1 with a 2.3 GHz Snapdragon 800 for the 1080p model and a slightly faster Snapdragon 801 for the Quad HD model that also sports 3 GB of RAM versus the 1.7 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 found in the Oppo N1. The bottom line though here is that while the Oppo N1 provided a fast and very smooth experience, the Find 7 is even better as Color OS glides through its elements and is still comparable to the Cyanogen mod that I have installed on the Oppo N1 you're seeing. Now, while the Oppo N1 featured a large 3610 milliamp hour battery, the Find 7 rocks a somewhat smaller one at 3000 milliamp hours. A Find 7's high resolution will certainly put more stress on the device's battery, but the Snapdragon 800 series is supposed to be more power frugal than the original Snapdragon 600 found in the N1. Between this and the fact that the N1's display is 5.9 inches, we'd wager that battery life is at least somewhat com comparable. What the Find 7 does have to its advantage, however, is called multi-step constant current charging technology, which basically allows the handset to charge from 0 to 75% in just 30 minutes. The Oppo Find 7 also brings some new features for Oppo that have now been unseen thus far in other devices like the N1 in their camp. First, there's the micro SD card slot, which allows for expandable memory and is certainly a welcome change. And even more importantly, the Oppo Find 7 is the first Oppo device to support LTE connectivity. Now, while the N1 does come with the O-Click remote accessory and the O-Touch area on the back that helps with some navigation, these are perhaps not as important to general users as the inclusion of those removable batteries, expandable storage, and of course, fast charging times are always a good prospect. Part of the Oppo N1's draw was its unique rotating camera, which offered a 13 megapixel sensor with dual LED flash. The Find 7 might not feature the rotating functionality that was found in the N1, but its camera is still very impressive. The camera is a 13 megapixel shooter that features the latest Sony Exmor RS sensor alongside a unique super zoom mode that takes a bunch of pictures and allows the Find 7 to focus in on more details. The camera app within Oppo's Color OS is largely the same as what you'd find in the N1, though there are at least a few minor changes here and there, like shooting in RAW format and 4K video recording. In the software department, once again, both handsets do use the same Color OS ROM, which is based on Android 4.3. This means that both devices have tons of special features and customizations that are unique to newer Oppo devices. Color OS offers some cool features like a gesture panel that allows you to draw programmable gestures uh, to perform a bunch of different tasks. Aside from that, the home, the home screens take on a rather ethereal look with some interesting choices in terms of the widgets and also the color schemes. But of course, on the Oppo N1, and likely for the future of the Find 7, it is possible to install Cyan mod for a different experience. However, many of the same features Color OS provides have been built in there as well. So Oppo continues to give its nods to the ROM community, being one of the few companies completely open to this level of customization built into their handsets. 
And so, there you have it. While the Oppo N1 certainly isn't aging much at all yet, the Find 7 rises to the occasion once again and showcases the best of a company that we're always excited to watch. Keep it tuned to Android Authority for all of the best coverage of Oppo's brand new flagship and head on over to AndroidAuthority.com for even more because we are your source for all things Android.